From the beginning of the electrical transmission of sounds, an objective measurement of audio levels was of course necessary. The first visual indicator, referred to as a transmission units meter, was used by the telephone company in the teens and was adopted for radio broadcasting in the early 20s. When sound on film became possible, specific needs led to various approaches. Because of the dramatic variation in program material, tremendous disparity existed across these industries. For example, the dynamic range of motion picture recording, which exceeded the range of live radio's program material, was better met with an expanded peak range. WEAF, New York. Recording in a more controlled environment was different yet. These varying approaches led to widespread confusion. The need for standardization became a reality. In 1937, the National Broadcasting Company, along with the Columbia Broadcasting System, in conjunction with the Bell Telephone Laboratories, arbitrated a standard volume units indicator still known as the VU meter. Since the standardization of the VU meter over 50 years ago, production styles, techniques, stereo, and now digital are making demands the VU meter can no longer meet. So we all became accustomed to staring at some kind of one-dimensional averaging indicator, whether mechanical or light-emitting diodes. Since the advent of the LED, technology has lent itself to the development of a meter movement that would have no mechanical restrictions, in other words, no inertia to overcome. <laughs> 